News agents, Monsieur Talleyrand indicated that for negotiations to proceed, a sum of money was first required for the pockets of the French. For the pockets of the French government and its ministers, that the price would be two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for himself. Yes, uh, a sweetener, Monsieur Talleyrand calls that. And uh, a loan of ten million to demonstrate our good faith. If Monsieur Talleyrand has been indiscreet, it would be wrong to ascribe blame to the entire French government. <laughs> Uh, Monsieur Talleyrand is the French government. I cannot account for such effrontery. Unless our envoys had some part in this mistake. Mr. Marshal vouches for the account. And I know him to be a man of his word. I am left no ground on which to expect our diplomatic mission to be accomplished in terms compatible with either the safety or the honor of this nation. So we must shield ourselves behind a wall of strength. Congress is prepared to grant my request to arm our merchant vessels and to fortify our harbors. And? Well, that's not all, is it, Mr. President? The need arise, we must be prepared to defend our borders with an army, yes. And to that end, I can think of no man better to lend the notion gravity than General Washington. General Washington? Well, he will exercise great caution in deploying it. He will be a commander in name only, you must know that. You cannot expect him to take the field at his age. Sort, Mr. Jefferson, no. General Washington will defer to Mr. Hamilton as he always has. The result will be a provocation of the most immense order, both here and abroad. And what precisely is Monsieur Talleyrand's unbridled contempt but a provocation? War has been this administration's policy from the beginning. To pretend otherwise is disingenuous in the extreme. If there is to be a war, Mr. Vice President, it will be France's doing and not mine. Mr. President, 